Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 1st, 2018 edition of the Sands of Storm Tennis Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you're listening to this and if you're running WebLogic, you probably know something bad is going to come. In April, Oracle released a critical patch update for its products. With that, it also patched yet another deserialization and remote code execution vulnerability in WebLogic. Now, there are two things that really make this particular flaw probably worse than the ones we had before. First of all, there is an exploit out. So yes, if you haven't patched, you probably have already been attacked. And secondly, while there is an exploit out, the patch actually doesn't fix all the ways how this particular vulnerability could be exploited. Oracle opted to just blacklist one very specific feature However, it did not patch the underlying vulnerability. Now, ever since this proof of concept was released about a week ago, we have seen very intense scans for port 7001 trying to exploit it using sort of your usual payloads. Haven't seen anything specifically yet that tries to bypass the patch, but that's probably only a couple days away if it hasn't been released already. This modified exploit shouldn't really be all that difficult to pull off. So I highly recommend that you do block port 7001 to your WebLogic servers. That's the default port WebLogic is listening on and that's what we usually see being scanned here. If you do need port 7001 exposed to the outside world for whatever critical business reason, then watch your WebLogic servers very, very carefully. Not really sure what else I could recommend there. Maybe something like a web application firewall may buy you additional time until Oracle releases a patch. And Trend Micro found an interesting worm that uses Facebook and malicious Chrome extensions to spread. Essentially, the idea how it works is that if a user installs one of many malicious Chrome extensions, this Chrome extension will then send Facebook messages to friends of this user advertising itself to these users. Now, the link claims to go to YouTube. The URL looks nothing like YouTube, so pretty easy to spot as a fake. But the page itself actually looks pretty close to the real thing. And then the user is presented a pop-up asking the user to install the extension. Of course, the idea here is that the user believes they're on YouTube and they're trusting YouTube, so they will install the extension. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a modern exploit if it wouldn't go after crypto coins in some way. And this particular extension does so in many ways. First of all, if you have a My Monero or CoinHive account, it will steal your passwords. It will also push cryptocurrency scams. If you go to specific cryptocurrency related websites, it will redirect you to its own site, which then advertises a scam. And of course, it will mine crypto coins on your system. Google is currently playing whack-a-mole with the different malicious extensions. They seem to be making some good headway here. Like I said, nothing really that easy to fall for, but I believe in particular the social engineering component here via Facebook Messenger may actually get some people to install this malicious extension. And if you ever wanted to get into software-defined radios, there is now a new little tool that actually allows you to send signals fairly cheap. Deeply. If you ever played with software-defined radios, you probably used one of these digital TV receivers. These are these cheap USB sticks you get for about $10 or $20 that allow you to receive data. Now, the new trick here is that there is a device that's similarly priced that actually allows you to send data. The device being used here is a USB VGA adapter. You can typically get it for around $15. And and 
Inside of this VGA adapter, you actually have a software-defined radio that's being used to modulate and create the VGA signals that are being emitted by this device. Now, the reason this makes kind of a real great sort of hobby and experimental device is that the signal is very low power, so you're not going to cause really any damage here, but you will be able, for example, to implement a cell phone tower or you may be able to spoof GPS signals, but for this to work, the receiver speaking the cell phone has to essentially touch uh, this connector in order to receive the signal. Now, of course, you may be able to extend the range somewhat with appropriate antennas, but be aware you may be violating various regulations and actually interfere with legitimate signals. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.